Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I'm going to be talking about my birth story. For those of you who don't know, I did give birth um, six months ago to a baby girl. So the reason why it's taking me so long to talk about it, it's a few things. One of the first reasons why it took me so long to talk about it was because for the longest time i felt so guilty about how my birth ended up being so i did end up having a c-section and um for a long time after i gave birth i felt like it was my fault that i ended up having a c-section i felt like i wasn't a good mom because i didn't do natural i did c-section which by the way it doesn't matter what type of birth you have a birth is a birth um, you carried that child for nine months, so you already have done a shit ton of work. Um, how you decide to birth or how you end up birthing that child has nothing to do with it. But um, I guess I was all in my head and maybe postpartum was kicking in. And that was one of the main reasons why it has taken me so long to talk about it because now is when I'm starting to feel more comfortable with you had an emergency c-section there was nothing that you can do about it you tried your hardest and that's just the way it that's what happened you're still a good mom so that was the main reason um so yeah i felt guilty i didn't have the best doctor and that is 100 percent my fault i because of how my insurance like really backstory um I, did, I didn't have insurance when i found out that i was pregnant and it was out of open enrollment period so like it was a whole mission for me to get insurance so i didn't get care until i was about maybe like 15 weeks before that i had had an ultrasound because i'm like i i need something so so i already felt super bad <laughs> that it had taken me that long I thought River was up that it had taken me that long to get care and um, so when I found this doctor which this doctor was recommended the um, OB office was recommended not the specific doctor I knew when I first met him I had a feeling that he wasn't going to be the doctor for me because He's, you know, nice guy, a lot of experience, great and all that. But for a first time mom, he wasn't holding my hand like I wanted him to. So I should have known. I should have just gone with my gut and just gone to another doctor. But since I was already late getting the care, I didn't want to go and like prolong the process and things like that. So 100% my fault. If I could go back, I would have just like switched it because... In, in your head like 15 weeks like oh my god i haven't but you have so much more of your pregnancy to go and and birth <laughs> the most important thing birth so if you don't see eye to eye with your doctor you need to switch out immediately so i like again he was a good doctor but he was just not vibing with me like at all i had mentioned to him because one of the things that I practiced was like hypnobirthing, um, which by the way, I didn't even get to try because I had a C-section. Um, and he looked at me, he's like, what's that? Another, another red flag that I should have been like, mm, switch. And I didn't, I didn't. Um, so just like a little side note, if you do not feel comfortable with your OB, it doesn't matter how far along you are in your pregnancy, switch you need to have you and your ob or your midwife you guys need to be like she finishes your he, she or he finishes your sentences like that's how tight you guys need to be um so that was another reason why i didn't want to talk about it because on top of feeling so guilty of not having a natural birth i felt even more guilty because a part of that was like well maybe if i had a different doctor this wouldn't have happened and another reason was this is my birth story and i'm like still talking another reason was i in my head i'm like i'm not going in with a birth plan and after i gave birth with, with a c-section i felt horrible so it's like i psyched myself out to think that if i didn't you know if i i should have prepared myself with saying yes i don't have a birth plan but either way i'm gonna feel okay right which is what i thought no I really wanted a natural birth 
and I should have been okay with that. I should have been okay with telling myself, okay, you want a natural birth, that's perfectly fine. Like, people tell you don't go in with a plan and this and that. It's like, yeah, I get what that means because anything could happen. But I was already with the mindset of like, okay, anything can happen. And truthfully, that wasn't okay with me. I wanted a natural birth. So those are the, some of the reasons why it took me so long to talk about my birth, but finally I feel comfortable talking about it. So that's what today's video is <laughs> after this long ass intro. Um, that's what today's video is. So let me get started. So when I gave birth, I was 40 weeks and about five, six days. Um, yeah. So at the beginning of the week I was 40 weeks and uh, like one day or two days and I had an number I had um I had an appointment with my OB so the week that I turned 40 weeks I thought that I was having contractions so I went to the hospital they checked me out it was false labor sent me back home when I was at the hospital during that time they did an ultrasound just to make sure that everything was okay with the baby they did the ultrasound, they said the baby was measuring pretty big. Told me about eight, almost nine pounds. Okay, then that Monday, I think it was Monday, I went for my 40 weeks and one day or two days, and I told them, I said, what is the plan? Because they've already done an ultrasound, and, and by the way, that was like maybe, it was like maybe like the second ultrasound that I had had done in one week and both ultrasounds told me that she was measuring big so I told him what is the game plan he goes I am not going to let you go past 41 weeks and blah 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 so I start panicking because at and midway through my pregnancy I knew that when my doctor like he wasn't going to he had his way and I had my way and I just I got to the point that I was like whatever I feel whatever I think whatever it's it's gonna be my way and that sucks because you shouldn't have that relationship with your OB like you should be able to take recommendations from him that's what he's there for but him and I weren't just clicking so I was just like other shit had happened and again completely my fault and I'm totally aware of it but still <laughs> I'm the pregnant one so um, I suffered but I tell him, hey, what is the game plan? He goes, I'm not going to let you go over 41 weeks and something. I said, mm, absolutely not. That is not happening. I've already had two ultrasounds where they're telling me that she's measuring over eight pounds, close to nine pounds. Like, uh, and I'm, I'm only 40 weeks in one day. Like, babies gain weight every week. And I was like, I am not going past Friday. And he goes, okay, fine, we'll induce you on Thursday. Thursday, I was maybe like 40 weeks and five days, close to 41 weeks. Um, so I go ahead and I get induced. They had called me that the hospitals were backed up, that, that the labor and delivery room was backed up. So I couldn't check in at the original time that I was supposed to check in. So we ended up checking in like at 11 o'clock at night. I got settled in, all that. I am zero dilated zero like zero everything like my cervix is shut everything is shut like nothing is happening so they start giving me medication um to start loosening up my cervix and they gave me like four doses of it and that that's given every three to four four hours i don't remember the name of it and they gave me that for 12 plus hours and still my cervix was closed so I hadn't eaten anything I was in pain but not too much pain um, so my OB tells me hey okay let's reset all over clearly nothing is happening why don't you go ahead and eat take a shower this must have been I got into Thursday this must have been Friday at about I want to say like maybe like 3 p.m. so a little over 12 hours so then um, she tells me you know just go ahead and take a shower I took off all of my because um, at this point you're all like connected so she's like just take a shower eat something let's regroup so we did that 
uh, the next step was nothing's happening, so we're we're gonna try is a foley, and a foley is pretty much they insert two balloons into your cervix so that it can start expanding and opening. Um, do you want me to try it without the epidural or with the epidural? I said, how painful is it? It's not that painful. Wrong. So she starts putting the foley in midway. I'm like, stop right now. I need the epidural. This is way too painful. So I started getting the epidural before I even started contracting. This is, th that was my sign to just go back home. That was my sign to just like, hey, abort mission, go back home. Because I could have done that. If I really wanted to, I could have said no. I'm going back home. So, um, they stopped what they were doing. They, um, oh, because the other thing was, once the foley was placed in, the contraction started. That helped, you know, the cervix open and contraction start. So, she put in one of the foley's, one of the balloons, and that's when I was like, stop, this is way too painful. But, one balloon was already in, so my contractions began. So, they had already called for the epidural, and the epidural came like about an hour later. So, for an hour, I was having strong contractions um, that were super painful. So, I was in pain for about a good hour. And I'm like, where the hell is this epidural? Like, why is it taking so long? Guess he's freaking out. He's seeing me in all this pain, all this crap. So, um, the lady finally comes in. She gives me the epidural. Um, they've put in the, they finished putting the foley in. I go completely numb. So now I'm just there, like, <laughs> waiting. Um, I want to say, like, maybe, like, two hours. At this point, like, two hours past. At this point, it's like... After the foley and the epidural and then the foley again and then it kicks in and all this crap, it must have been like 10 o'clock. <laughs> um, so whatever. They keep waiting to see where the foley goes and things like that. So at this point, I was induced Thursday night on medication for 12 hours to try to open my cervix. Nothing happens. Regroup. I get the foley, I get the epidural, I get their other, I get the rest of the foley, um, and now I'm just letting time pass to see what happens. So um, at this point, it must have been like maybe ten, when they say, "Okay, listen, we've done everything. You know, now it's time to continue moving along." And the next thing is the pitocin. So the pitocin is the other drug that. The foley helps the cervix start to like open up and the pitocin is what helps the contractions kick in and all that um, for you to start going into active labor. So I said, okay, um, once the pitocin kicks in, you don't really know how quick the contractions are going to go and how, how soon you're going to start dilating. So I, I said, okay, so give me the Pitocin and, and we'll see where this goes. At this point, I don't even know if I had began to dilate. I don't even remember. But um, I had had the epidural and the Foley in for like maybe like an hour and a half, two hours, something like that. And so um, they give me the Pitocin. And as soon as they give me the Pitocin, maybe not even within 10 minutes, the nurse comes in and she's like, hey, um... The doctor is on her way back. You need to have an emergency C-section. The minute we gave you the Pitocin, your baby's heart rate started to go down. And um, it, at this point, it's too dangerous. We've done everything that we can. We have offered everything that we can. And the, we, there's nothing else that we can do. You, you need to have an emergency C-section. And before she came in and said that, Gesley tells me you're gonna have a c-section and i'm like why are you saying that and he goes well because i'm looking i've been looking at river's heartbeat the entire day so i know how to read the monitor and her heartbeat is going down it continues to drop and so she just left and i'm pretty sure that she's coming in to tell you that you're having a c-section i'm like i don't know let's see let, like let's just see where this goes sure enough she comes in, she tells me I'm going to have an emergency C-section. And what do I do? I immediately throw up. So as soon as they tell me that, I threw up. 
and um, I got really nervous kind of started panicking a little bit but like calmed myself down and then I started having mini convulsions so it's just like they call it the shakes and um, that lasted about two hours because as they're rolling me into the emergency room to start the c-section I am still having the shakes I for sure thought that my c-section line was gonna come out like that because of how hard I was shaking um, so the entire c-section I'm shaking um, and even after the c-section I'm shaking so anyways um, they once they told me that they were giving me the c-section all you see, I swear I was in a twilight zone. All I see is people coming in and out, but like in slow motion. I just saw people coming in and out, having me sign papers, um, guesses like <laughs> in a corner, kind of like just quiet, but I can tell that he's like super annoyed because he told me after, he's like, they're just like, they're moving so fast. They're having you sign all these papers that you have no idea what you're signing um and i remember like i think i made a joke while i was signing the papers i was like gusly you know if it's really bad just let me go what <laughs> so stupid um so yeah so they are prepping me um moving in and out really quick it's like two three nurses prepping and um they like 15 minutes later 15 minutes within from them telling me that I was having the c-section I was in the OR room they put me into the OR they're getting Gussie right to bring him in what they do is they have they prep the dad outside and the dad waits until they the mom gives birth and once they bring out the baby they bring in the dad into the OR room so she was born um, she was born like at 11 o'clock at night, so exactly 24 hours after me going to the hospital is when I had River. Um, so they cut me open. I didn't really feel anything. I mean, I already had had the epidural and for a while, and then I'm sure they numb a little bit more. Um, so they brought her over and... I was like, oh my god, this is crazy. Then they, they took her to the, the side of the of the OR room with Gusley, and then they did all the vitals and all that other stuff. Um, and then they sewed me back up. Uh, that took about 30 minutes. And it wasn't that bad because the other thing too is as I'm laying there, there are some lights that you can kind of see the reflection a little so i know that if i focused on that and that i looked too hard i was going to see what was on the other side of my of the table aka my body open um so i was like okay let me focus so that kind of distracted me because i'm like let me focus on not focusing on that and i focus on other stuff um but i still was having the shakes so the other thing too was i was also trying to focus on like calming my body so i thought when i get really anxious or really nervous or something what i can what i'm able to do is i can talk myself down it's super exhausting very it's very mentally exhausting but i'm able to do that so i was trying to do that little did i know it had nothing to do with my mind i mean i'm sure it did but it was really just my physical body just convulsing um so i was trying to calm myself down the entire 30 40 minutes that i was on the table and that also helped me too to let the time pass and like not focus so much on being open on a table um so once they closed me all back up i went back to the room where river and gusley were and um you know they did the whole breastfeeding and all that stuff um so that that was my birth story um it wasn't a horrible birth but it could have been better um oh and the other funny part the ob that i had all nine months he didn't deliver me where where was he i have no idea um and then the week before he was on vacation and i said of course my luck i'm going to go into labor on the week that he's on vacation okay i didn't go into labor on the week that i was on vacation that he was on vacation 
and then he was back from vacation and then he still didn't deliver me it turned out because the doctor that i did have that was on call was amazing she really explained everything to me she did everything that she could she was very nice very sweet about it didn't pressure me into anything i didn't want didn't so it kind of worked out um but yeah my ob was just like the ob my ob story my ob experience was just a zero a zero out of ten that yeah that that's my story we were there um for two days later you know luckily river was a healthy baby and nothing was wrong so normally c-sections they have to keep you in the hospital a little bit longer but because everything was good i was healing well the baby was good and it was covid they agreed to send us home a little bit sooner so we got to go home a day earlier um so we were there after birth we were there two days so yeah that was my birth story again um not the worst but definitely could have been better for me i just it, it took me a while to get over the fact that i didn't take the easy route i and that was the other thing in my head i'm like you cheated you cheated because you had a c-section you didn't do the hard work you didn't do what you had to do to bring river into the world um but finally you know i got over that and and thankfully i can i can say that it's my story it's my birth story and um i tried my best i did what i could um so what a lot of people don't realize is that birth isn't easy in general period but it's, I mean, obviously it's a different story for everyone, but truly, if you have a natural delivery, the recovery is a bit easier, you know, so to speak. But the natural delivery is like, it's really hard on the body and, and tough and stuff like that. And then if you have a C-section, it's like the easier route, but then recovery is a lot harder. It's uh, the timing to recover as opposed to having a natural delivery is double the time so it just if you know everyone's birth story is completely different um no mom gets a pass in any <laughs> in any birth like you're going to struggle at some point in your birth if it's postpartum if it's recovery like pregnancy is hard in general and that's not to scare anyone it's to you know be honest and be raw some women get how you know are pregnant and they're like oh my god i love being pregnant and some other women are like i hate this thing and some women have a beautiful birth and some women almost die trying to bring their baby to this world so it's a different story for everyone so this is just a reminder to have some grace with with people in general and like the mom shaming I'm not here for it I don't understand why that's a thing um do you do you and do what's best for you and for your baby and that's it so that is the end of that rant <laughs> so yeah in Gus's opinion this was a horrible experience for him I'm like you weren't the one pregnant um but I understand it was very stressful for him and I get it so he's like we're definitely doing a water birth in our home the next time I'm like okay uh so but yeah that um that was our birth story and we're so happy that you know we ended up having a healthy and and happy baby so at the end of the day it doesn't really matter what happened during that time all that matters is that you have a healthy baby um so yeah that concludes this video thank you guys so much for watching if you haven't please be sure to like comment share and subscribe and i'll see you guys in my next video bye